Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband and our 10th year anniversary series. Alright, so here we go. We are now entering the deepest territory in Saranid lands. And, well, the, the main problem that I'm seeing right now is the fact that, uh, yeah, I need to upgrade my crossbow. I have been uh, using this for a little bit of extra time in my off-screen progression and uh well as you could see right there i mean i headshot a guy for 23 damage i think just before yeah very very little damage as you can see and well i don't think that that's how it should be to be honest i think we should definitely do a little bit more damage so i'm gonna try and see if i can find a siege crossbow or something like that obviously i'm pretty far away from rodok territory right now and you're probably gonna find a really good crossbow there so unfortunately i probably won't be able to upgrade it just yet however i did in better news finish reading my engineering book which i am super pleased about because that now means that i am at maximum engineering level and that means that every single siege tower i construct takes me six hours to make in comparison to well what it usually is, which is usually uh, 72 hours without any engineering as far as I'm aware, or 84 or something like that, or something crazy, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it used to be 24 hours at 8 engineering, and now it is only 6. So we are really, really doing very, very nicely here. And I am super, super pleased that we were actually able to do that. Ferentis, on the other hand, by the way, is doing an absolute beastly job of basically just murdering everything in sight. I don't know why he's even able to do that, considering he is very low level, although he did just get eliminated, but I think I haven't... I, I don't think I've spent his points, to be honest. I don't think I've actually leveled him up since the previous episode, so I'm going to have to speak to him after this and see if I can maybe uh, increase his power strike and things like that and make him e in into an even bigger beast than he already is because if you recall in the previous episode he actually went in first ever battle that we saw him in after I gave him some additional equipment and he literally just murdered everything in sight he killed I think seven enemies or something like that in quick succession as well it wasn't just a a long drawn out process he murdered everything so i was very very pr pleased proud whatever you want to call it and um yeah i'm hopeful that we'll be able to make him even better as time goes on i need to help this uh, this fellow here this north huskal he's having some big issues oh he got himself murdered ah that is unfortunate really wanted to try and prevent him from being eliminated there but unfortunately not able to do so and there we go oh nice there we are okay not too bad okay so one thing that i want to mention there is one castle very specifically that i decided that i would completely ignore for the moment yeah i'm 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 gonna say that maybe this is one of the worst sieges not this one particularly that i'm in right now but the one that i skipped and i'll show you which castle it is maybe you know it and uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when we head in there. Because I'm not sure if I should really head in there on screen. Because the, uh, the distance that needs to be covered for the siege tower to actually reach the walls is immense. And I was thinking to myself, what's going on here? This is absolutely ludicrous. I'm not entirely sure if it's even going to make any difference for me to do that. It, it seems like a complete waste of time. So... I might do that, I might not, I'm not entirely sure, but I want to show you anyway. This, Jamayed Castle. Jamayed Castle is the worst siege that uh, you can possibly do in terms of time absorption. Let's just say that. It takes a long time to basically get anything done there. And I'm kind of livid about it, to be honest. I, I kind of really wanted to, um, you know take it i really wanted to take it because that would actually li uh, you know limit the amount of um amount of movement that the enemy might actually have but anyway we are actually seeing a lot of people starting to leave my faction as well as you can see emir doru has actually left but bear in mind they don't have any fiefs so it's not that big a deal um but the, you know it's it's a it's a bit of a deal because obviously then they are going to become pretty strong as it is you know uh, as you can see more people are indeed wanting to leave they are leaving and joining the Saranids. 
Um, so this is not good. This is not particularly good. But I can't do much about that. Unless I wanted to give them all these fiefs and then all my other people would start losing relation at the same time. And uh, frankly, I'm not entirely sure where any of these guys are. Because they don't seem to really be helping me that much. Which is a bit weird. But, you know. If they don't have a, a good amount of relation with you, then it's highly unlikely that they're even going to turn up. So maybe I shouldn't even worry about it. Anyway, uh, we're going to increase his strength. We're going to go for another point in power strike. Let's get him some more points in two-handed because that's what he's using primarily. And um, I'm just going to uh, do that. There we go. Okay, let's get Jeremus all the way down. There we go. And we're heading into Shawa Castle now. 137. These are all siege towers. What's actually going on here with the siege towers in Saranid lands? This is this is actually kind of crazy. I, I don't even know what's going on with that. Um, but yeah. Oh, nope. Nope. I I really don't know what's good. You know what? I really don't know what's going on with the um, with the siege tower placement in this area. I thought Jamayed Castle was bad, but Shawa Castle is pretty awful too. Basically, they place the siege tower so incredibly far away from the walls that it takes about 10 minutes, maybe even longer for the siege tower to even reach it. And that is just unacceptable, in my opinion. That's just very, very bad. Anyway, um, the ladders should be done almost instantly here. As you can see, they are done. And let me just wait until daytime. And I was actually hoping that for them to sally out, but apparently they didn't want to. Okay. All right. This is going to be a bit interesting. Oh, the battle advantage is only minus one. Okay, that's very strange because my tactic skill is not that big. So I don't think I should really be um, countering them at all or anything like that. But um, oh, 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 I almost I almost fell off. Did you see that? I almost fell off. But thankfully, I seem to have uh, stabilized myself randomly. Not entirely sure how that even happened. But yeah, very pleased that we didn't fall off there. That would have been really bad. But thankfully, I am now able to murder every single one of these people. Here we go. Oh yeah, I was actually very recently talking on a stream uh, of Bannerlord uh, that the battle size for Warband can be changed. And of course can be changed to a pretty significant number, uh, all things considered. However, this is a great example for me right now to bring attention to. If you have a larger battle size, I actually don't have a larger battle size. I'm playing on default at the moment, which is 150. Um, but look at what's actually going on here. Those three units spawned outside the barrier. And that, that, that can happen much more often if you have a larger battle size. So obviously there are a, a couple of janky things that can happen even if you are on the default battle size. So just be prepared if you do change the battle size that maybe you're going to see more of this happening where there are enemies and indeed allies behind certain barriers that they shouldn't be and that might that might happen more often so yeah just to, just just be aware of that just in case um i'd actually like to jump down here but unfortunately i think i'm going to take a bit too much damage so i'm probably not going to do that and instead we're just going to move down normally or not as the case may be <laughs> uh yeah uh, what a classic okay so now i have to be very careful here because saranids are actually pretty good with yep Pretty good with thrown weapons, as you can see, so I'm not really wanting to get myself murdered as I make my way over here, so I'm just going to try and kill these guys as best I can, not take too much damage. That fellow's running away, so I don't really need to worry about him. This fellow's already dead. Okay, great. Okay, not too bad. And now we can continue to move forward. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to just place my hold position flag over there. I want my forces to get off the stairs, if at all possible, because as it stands right now, a lot of the enemy are freely able to throw their throne weapons at us, and that is not going to be very nice. They're going to do a lot of damage in that respect, and we really want to make sure that they don't have the ability to freely do that as much as they want. So that's exactly the reason why we're doing that. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Let me uh, let me actually tell everyone to charge now because we are going to need to do that. I have no idea, by the way, how many forces are actually inside the garrison here because, let's face it, I'd rather do this and kill 500 units than go into a siege with a siege tower that is 20 minutes away from the walls. You know, 
Uh, that, that That's just absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. But yeah, we're going to have to do that eventually, of course. But as it stands right now, I really just don't want to. So we're just going to do do this the old fashioned way. I think I'm actually going to die. Okay, please, please be a bit careful. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to hide over here while my forces deal with the enemy. Seems like that is the best possible thing for me to do. Let me see if I can get a couple of headshots. Really? Didn't hit anyone with that? Okay, I'm very surprised. Okay, there we go. We hit someone. Ugh. Yeah, my crossbow skill or damage is pretty low. Need to get a better crossbow, as I said. I'm a bit worried about actually getting shot from here as well, because I am pretty low in general, so basically any damage at all can eliminate me. Oh, what? Are you... Are you serious, sir? What are you doing there? What was he doing there? Okay, I've got to be super careful. Got to be super careful. I'm being shot. One damage. Oh, no. This guy? How? Oh, wow. Okay, there are still people behind us. I had no idea. Okay, I had no idea that that was the case. Okay, whew. Thankfully, we were actually not at 1 HP. We were seemingly at 2 or 3 or something like that. I can't actually tell. Um, but yeah, that is... <laughs> that was real close. That was real close. There's actually someone above me right now. I'd like to eliminate them, but um, yeah, you can see here. I don't really want to get myself eliminated at this exact moment because there are 8 enemies remaining. Would be fantastic if... Should I? You know what? I'm gonna get... I'm gonna get my crossbow out. And we're gonna try and do a little bit of damage. Maybe I can snipe one of them. Uh, uh, famous last words. What do you bet? Is it famous last words for me? No. Nice headshot. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else want a piece? No? Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Ooh. That was... Uh, that was, uh, that was tense. That was very, very tense indeed. I was not expecting that one bit. And, uh, I thought to myself, oh yeah, so I'm very, very safe in this particular area. But no, then I all of a sudden got attacked from out of nowhere. That was hilarious. This guy's having a nice little, nice little dance on the battlements as well. And there's one enemy remaining. Where is he? He seems to be outside. Okay, you know what? Um, I guess I'm just going to retreat. There we go. Um, okay, let me... Yes, there we go, there we go. Okay, fantastic. We didn't get the renown for it, which is really, really sad in my opinion. Those kinds of things happen, but obviously it's just a bug. You know, someone spawned inside the environment or something like that, and we can't get out there that easily. So, um, yeah, there we go. They are now going to surrender, which is exactly what we wanted, or... Well, it, it kind of leads to the same same path, doesn't it? That is perfectly fine with me. All right, so now I'm actually thinking I'm going to maybe give this to myself. I will give this to myself for now. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think I really have the ability to put many people in here. I might go inside the tavern and actually see if there are not into the streets. You imbecile. No, I will go into the tavern. Ah, there are some uh, mercenary crossbowmen here. Obviously, that's basically pointless. For the most part but we, we're just going to put five people in there i guess i mean if they want to take it then they are going to take it no matter what that's pretty much how things are going to go so i will go over to bardak castle we'll see what's going on here is this another siege tower no it isn't okay that's hilarious uh, let me see if I can call for it. No, definitely can't call for that. Okay, let's head in. Okay, now I'm going to try to be very quick with the other sieges here. So obviously I have just taken Barry and we're going to attempt to take the various other castles around this. And this is obviously for a very good reason. We want to make sure that there's a maximum amount of distraction. Because the maximum amount of distra distraction that you can get, the better. Because that is going to enable us more time. And time is pretty much the most valuable resource we can have at the moment. With the exception of really strong troops, of course. Um, because that time is going to allow us to besiege additional things. Take additional things. And then we will expand our territory while the enemy is just left floundering. And, and left wondering what's going on. And thankfully we're hopefully going to be able to do that. So I'm, all, I'm already in the battlements, which is fantastic. Now we can do some massive damage. This is actually one of those times where I personally feel like the 
player character has a pretty significant impact on what's going on in the actual battle. Because you may think, oh yeah, you know, player character is obviously going to have a pretty big impact. But I feel like in Bannerlord, unless you are very high level, you don't really have that much of an impact. And you need to have a bit more of an awareness of commanding your troops. Not in sieges specifically, but in field battles, more like. Uh, because there are many, many cases where I've gone into a a field battle and strategy and tactics are the thing that basically gave me the victory rather than my own personal performance whereas I think in Warband it's a little bit different because while you can use strategy and while there are a couple of things you can do they're not that extensive and it's more than likely going to be the case that the player's own skill comes into it a bit more or the fact that you have a decent weapon or something like that because in many cases then you're going to be doing a lot of damage you're probably going to be getting at least i don't know 15 20 25 kills and while that may not seem like a lot and yeah sure it's not not that much but it's gonna cause morale problems for the opponent and morale problems are certainly where it is at. You want to make sure that the enemy knows that you are to be feared on the battlefield. You want to make sure that they know that they should run at the first sign of you on the battlefield. Because then they are going to be running away and not defending themselves. And that's going to be much better. Or at least I think. I think that would be much better. But obviously it's very much up to you how you want to play. If you want to focus more on strategy, if you want to focus more on commanding your troops, then of course you can do that. But uh, yeah, as I say, I think in Warband, the uh, player has a much bigger impact on the battle. And you can see here, look at how look at how much damage I'm doing right now. I have no idea how many units I've killed, because obviously they don't give you a counter for that. But I'm going to assume I've killed maybe 40, maybe, maybe 30, I don't know. Somewhere around that, nu that, that number, I guess. And that's a pretty significant amount, considering we've only eliminated 200. So one person, i.e. me, being able to eliminate 40 of the enemy's defenders makes a pretty significant difference overall. And I think that can really, that can really help. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I actually did get that wrong, by the way. So it is actually Nord veterans that, that uh, level up from Nord warriors. So I've been thinking this entire time that it's Nord warriors going into... Uh, Huskals. So my bad. <laughs> As I say, I, I was a bit, you know, I'm a bit rusty, a bit rusty. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make any excuses. I just mm, got them mixed up, I guess. Just got them mixed up. Anyway, there you go. Thank you for uh, correcting me as well, by the way, uh, in the previous uh, previous comment section. That was um, <laughs> very much required because apparently I completely just mind mind blanked on that or something. Anyway, uh, oh, should not have done that. I should not have done that. Oh, well, never mind. That's actually fine. You know, getting some more infantry is not too bad. We're going to continue increasing Marnid's power strike so that he can become an even more beastly combatant. And we're going to be moving on to Amarad. Amarad is now the next one that we will attack. 389 here. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, I still hope that they actually sally out at some point. I don't know why they're not sallying out. It would be absolutely amazing if they could. It's going to make things so much easier for us, but obviously, <laughs> uh, maybe that's the point. You know, maybe that's the point. They don't want us to make it easy. They, you know, they don't, they don't want to make it easier for us, shall we say. Um, so yeah, let me just murder this fellow, and uh, hopefully we'll get in without getting shot off the ladder. Don't shoot me off the ladder, please. No, it seems like, oh no, I got headshot. Okay, that's bad. That is really bad. As I've said before, if I get eliminated, that is it. We're out of there. So we really want to make sure that I survive. But <laughs> that's easier said than done, I think. Very much easier said than done. Let me see if I can actually do this. Can I get into the battlements and actually do something useful? We are doing something useful, of course. We're clearing the way here pretty significantly, in fact. Very surprisingly, in fact. And um, hopefully, we will be able to get inside. I don't want to jump. If I jump right now, I'm going to get catapulted away from the battlements. But if this was Bannerlord, I would have jumped. 
and we probably would have had uh, a slightly easier entry to the battlements, but, you know, that's just how it is. Different Difference in game engine and things. Okay, here we go. Nice. Just eliminate all of these. This Bardiche is absolutely amazing, by the way. I, I, I'm, I'm going to always sing the praises of the Bardiche. It is very, very good. And just the regular one. You don't need the great long one or anything like that, but just the regular Bardiche. It's amazing. It's very, very fun to use. But then again, every single two-handed is probably going to be fun to use at this point. And uh, you're going to have a whale of a time with it. That's the thing. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. It seems like, I, I don't know, the, t the timeline of me playing this game and this franchise in general has changed so dramatically over the years because originally I used to always be saying to myself, okay, I've got to go for a sword and shield. I have to go for a sword and shield. There is no other option because if I don't go for a shield, I'm going to die very quickly. And yeah, okay, okay. In some aspects, yes, that is absolutely true. For example, if you were to play something like Pendor, or if you were to play, um, I don't know, something where you just are up against a bunch of ranged enemies. You know, if you're up against a bunch of ranged enemies, then of course the shield, having a shield is going to make a pretty significant difference. But when I'm playing native, and when I'm playing uh, Bannerlord in general, I don't feel like I'm missing out by not having a shield. Because in Bannerlord right now, I'm using a two-handed axe, uh, the, 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 uh, the stream series that I'm, that I'm currently doing. I'm using a two-handed axe, and I never feel like I'm missing a shield. It's actually funny, because I used to, as I say, I used to always basically say to myself, I need a shield. It is required for me to be able to play this character. But no, you, d you don't actually need that. You can just play with whatever you want, and you can make it work. It just very much depends on your... Oh dear. Okay. No, no, we're, we're fine, we're fine. Okay, I was going to say, just very much depends on the way that you play it. Because, of course, if you have two-handed, you have to be a bit more aware of where you are, a bit more aware of who's shooting at you, because there, uh, there's been many, many opportunities for the enemy to shoot at me. Like just now. I jinxed it. All right. I jinxed it. Wow. That was, that was fantastic, wasn't it? All right. There's still a pretty significant amount of units there, but I'm just going to wait here for some time and uh, then we're going to be able to go back in. But yeah, you can see here, look at how much money I'm now making from Wercheg, Barry, Yi. They're, make, they're giving me literally 11,000. It's pretty crazy. And uh, we can just level up a couple of forces here. Thankfully, Jeremus is still up on his feet. So he's going to very quickly get us back up to full HP. And Ferentus has actually leveled up once again. So let's give him another point in Power Strike. And we do actually have some more of these guys to level up too. There we go. Okay, so yeah. Thankfully, because I do have 10 in Engineering, the ladder is instant. I can literally just make the ladder. Boom, there you go. Done. That's it. Super, super fast, super easy, really enjoyable to have maximum engineering. And uh, that's the kind of thing, you know, that's the kind of thing I kind of miss from, from Warband that uh, you don't really get in Bannerlord nowadays, because obviously if you think about it, you know, what, what, is, what is siege combat like in Bannerlord? Well, it's all about, you know, building ranged siege engines, destroying the enemy's ranged siege engines, and then destroying their walls. That is generally considered the easiest and most efficient way of ensuring that you take a particular thief without that many casualties. However, there are other different ways of going about it, but I kind of miss the days when you just build a ladder and you just go in and try to murder everything. But obviously you can do that, you know, you can do that in Battlelord, but it is very much punished. You're punished a lot harder for trying to do that than you are in Warband. Because obviously in Warband, that's basically the only option. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Kind of miss those days because, uh, like for example right now, look at me. I'm on the battlements. I'm right here. I'm killing enemies. In Bannerlord, I'd still be outside on the campaign map, you know. I'd be out on the campaign map. I'd be bombarding enemies, uh, you know, trying to destroy their siege and, and so on. And the one thing that I gotta say that I very badly 
do not like about the Bannerlord Siege are Siege Bombardment Casualties. That is something that I have spoken about quite often, but maybe not enough, I don't know. But for me specifically, I do not like that one bit. Uh, of course, it is to be expected that you are going to be losing units when you go and attempt a siege. But the way that you lose the units in Bannerlord to the bombardment, or should we say the retaliatory bombardment, because obviously the enemy is attempting to, you know, destroy your own siege crews and stuff like that that are manning your trebuchets. Of course they're trying to do that, of course, right? But the problem with it is that it's just a random event, basically. It's not an not a event as in Brissenwalder random events or Viking Conquest random events or anything like that. It's not random in that sense, but it's random in the way that you're doing this, you're all intents and purposes having siege engines that are completely fine. They're, they're not being destroyed or anything like that. But then all of a sudden, you look at your troop count and you've lost 20 units. And I'm talking about high tier units and you've just lost them to nothing. And they die. They're just dead. They're gone. And they, they are completely removed from your army in that sense. And that is very irritating. That is one of the most irritating things that can happen in Bannerlord, in my opinion. Um, but of course, there are a number of other things that can also happen that are kind of frustrating to deal with. For example, enemies continue, continuing to run after you, even though you have, um, you know, distracted them and, and so on and so forth. You know, those kinds of things. But I'm not going to get into that. But yeah, generally, that's what I'm talking about. Those kinds of things would be wonderful if they were a little bit different, if they were done a little bit differently, because the bombardment, as I say, let's say you have, I don't know, I'm going to use warband terminology here. So let's say you have, I don't know, like me, I've got 61 Nord Huskals. Imagine me doing a siege and I lose 20 of them to nothing. I just, I just lose them randomly. In my opinion, that's kind of, eh, you know, that's not, that's not that fun. You know what I mean? Because you're literally just, oh, no, this is, no, no, I'm not doing this. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that one. Thank you very much. I will do it. I will do it, but I'll probably do it off screen because it is one of those, you know, it's one of those that is literally the, one of the worst. So incredibly far away. You're going to have to walk a long, long way to get to the ladder. Um, but what I'm talking about is random stuff that makes you lose valuable units in your army and they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything at all in battle. They didn't kill anyone. They didn't um, prevail against overwhelming odds. There's no story to tell about them. And it feels a bit empty. You know what I mean? It feels a bit empty. It feels a bit fruitless for these kinds of things to happen. And, you know, you lose those 20 Huskals in a random siege bombardment. And it's just like, well, okay, I kind of spent a lot of time leveling those guys up. And now all of a sudden, they're not in my army anymore because of some random calculation that's happening in the background in a siege. And it feels a bit, feels a bit bad, you know? feels a bit bad but maybe that's just me i don't know maybe may, I, I mean i'm not saying that there shouldn't be any casualties by the way in a siege um, situation but i personally feel like what there should be is like an event that happens where the enemy comes out of the garrison kind of like a sally out but they come out to try and strike directly at your siege engines so for example they go immediately and try to destroy your trebuchets in person so you actually have the ability to defend your own units. And I'm talking about being outnumbered. In other words, you're outnumbered. You have a handful of units at the siege equipment and you have to defend them. So it's you and I don't know, um, four Huskars at each siege tower or something like that. And you have to defend against 30 units or something. I don't know, just random random number off the top of my head. But that kind of thing would be very cool because it puts the control back in the player's hands rather than just some random calculation, as I say, in the background of the siege. And that would make it a lot more fun because it's 
then not so cheap feeling and you kind of have a bit more of an understanding that oh yeah I remember that guy he was lost defending my trebuchets as they were bombarding that particular thief whatever it might be and I think that could be quite fun but uh, that's obviously not the way that it's uh, it's being done right now so, which is which is sad you know it is sad in my opinion but you know um, maybe, maybe it's going to be changed at some point I, I doubt it um, personally but maybe a mod maybe a mod will come in and uh, change the siege mechanics a little bit around I know it, with Chaos's tweaks you can actually change the amount of siege bombardment casualties and uh, usually I leave it alone most of the time but sometimes I, I just I don't know it depends sometimes it's just so incredibly annoying to deal with and uh, I don't know it, it's nice to reduce it a little bit because even with the reduction and I, I've tested this in the past this has just been completely off screen in my own saves and stuff but when I've tested this in the past and I've reduced the siege bombardment casualties it still gives me massive amounts of casualties even though I've already reduced it and then I put it back up to default and I take double or even triple the amount of casualties obviously this is all in um, you know alternate saves this, this you know I wouldn't do that with a with a series save or anything like that but yeah it's uh it's kind of crazy it's kind of crazy anyway we have oh a sword sister nice that is very cool um yeah well that's it that's all I have uh, unfortunately all right well whatever the case we can uh, just move on relatively easily and we have now taken Samara Castle so this is what's going on and you can see here we are sweeping across the the uh, Saranids relatively easily unfortunately these castles I'm going to be taking them off screen I think I will probably show you Jamiet Castle and uh, the the layout of it I think the castle layout is very cool but the way that they spawn the siege tower so far away from the walls is just uh, it is very annoying uh, let's just say that anyway I'm going to be taking Shawa Castle, Durin Castle off screen and then I'll take Jamayed uh, with you and then we'll also take De Cuba and maybe, just maybe, we'll finish off the Serenids in the, in the next episode. So that, might be, uh, that might be doable. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.